This is a cocktail of two monoclonal antibodies from the pharmaceutical company Legenera. In 2020, this treatment first made headlines when President Donald Trump tested positive for the coronavirus. They gave me Regeneron, and it was like unbelievable. It just made me better, okay? I call that a cure. Though Trump inaccurately called it a cure, studies have shown that it is a highly effective coronavirus treatment. Antibodies are proteins that our body makes anytime it gets any infection. It can be the flu, it can be COVID, it can be strep throat. They're normal part of our immune system, and this is how we're able to fight off different infections. I mean, monoclonal antibody therapy for COVID-19 is, I think, one of the highlights and successes we've had scientifically in the last year. Of course, the other big scientific breakthrough of the pandemic was the development of COVID-19 vaccines, which remain the most effective way to stop the spread of the virus. But monoclonal antibody therapy is also important. These monoclonal antibodies seem to be very, very effective. The, the real purpose of these is to basically prevent someone from needing to be hospitalized. If given early, uh, within 10 days of symptoms, they reduce the risk of hospitalization or death by almost 80%. They reduce the symptoms by four days. They reduce the amount of virus in the nose so that, you know, there's less of a chance of spreading it to a family member. As antibody treatments become more available in the United States, health experts do encourage their use. A much underutilized intervention for COVID-19. But they also warn that they are not a substitution for vaccines. The vaccine is what you take to prevent disease, what you take so that you don't get sick. Right now, the majority of the antibody treatments is to treat once you've gotten sick. So um, that's a difference, right? To prevent illness versus treat illness. Even still, the demand for antibody treatments has skyrocketed in certain areas. Who are sick with COVID are lining up at sites like this one in Tampa, hoping for a boost in fighting it off. In September 2021, the Department of Health and Human Services took over distribution of monoclonal antibodies. The federal government has resumed control of these drugs' distribution as their use skyrocketed with the summer surge. But there are still some roadblocks in distributing the antibodies more widely. They're a lot pricier than vaccines. In fact, they're nearly 54 times the value of two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. They're also more complicated to administer. It's frozen. Uh, there has to be a pharmacist who sort of has to pull it up and, and reconstitute it. And then we have to watch that individual for one hour. So you need nurses, you need an infusion center, and you need a place where a COVID positive patient can be seen. And I think in all honesty, those three things, you know, right now we have a huge staffing and nursing uh, and healthcare shortage across the country. Uh, uh, hospitals are full, they're busy, um, and you have to see COVID positive patients. So it's not like being able to walk into your local Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid Pharmacy and get the vaccine. So just much more operationally heavy lift. These strains on the healthcare system are a result of the highly contagious Delta variants spreading among the unvaccinated, who are far more likely to be hospitalized if they're infected. Some officials are urging healthcare providers to give priority to unvaccinated people when distributing monoclonal antibodies. I think it can be helpful treatment with the current surge, uh, but only to treat people who are already positive. It's not a fix all. Uh, and it can't prevent um, this surge from continuing, and certainly not the next surge, which we know will happen. 